I want to say welcome and how excited I am that you're here with me today, that I might share this message. And I'm going to pray right now and ask God to forgive us for any sin in our life so that we can receive everything he has for us today and also to use this message and to use me so that you can receive everything the Lord has for you today. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for any sin in my life that might stand in the way of me receiving what you want me to receive today. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much and that you have a plan for each and every one of us, Lord God. Please impart that plan into our lives, Lord, that we may walk the way that you want us to walk and receive everything that we have from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you a little bit today about anxiety and trouble and fear in the midst of a storm. Now, I am going to make some reference, obviously, to what we are going through in the world right now with the COVID-19 virus, but I don't want to focus on that because we have storms in our lives every day, every all the time. And whether or not we are weathering stu- through a storm globally or in our community, we also have our personal lives. And I can tell you in the midst of this storm, I have a, a testimony to give to you about how God has used the storm in my life to bring me closer to him through all my anxiety and fear and trouble. And I'm just going to share a little bit about that. If most of you know that I have been struggling with my health for the past several years. And I really believe in the midst of that storm that God has been raising me up and changing me to be the person he wants me to be. And what I mean to say that in the illness, yes, and when I'm not feeling well, I have been troubled and I have been anxious, not knowing what is going to happen, not having control over the fact that I'm going to be healed because I'm taking certain medications, not having control over the idea that maybe I'm not going to feel better tomorrow. Especially now, because we're not able to get the help we need medically, the hospitals are closed down. The doctor's offices are no longer available for us to walk in. It brings more anxiety because we're not familiar with going through these things. We're used to having the help when we need them. We're used to having medications to help us through. And there are some people who can identify with me having an illness such as cancer or having an illness such as, uh, you know, some autoimmune disease that's destroying our bodies. We don't have control. But yet, in the midst of it, God has control. How did this affect me? Well, once you've been ill, and you've been ill for a period of time, it wears you thin. And the anxiety starts to come because we've been in an unfamiliar place. We've not been here before. So we doubt. We start to doubt. Lord, am I actually going to get better? And how come I'm not feeling better? It's easy for us to concern ourselves about it because we have nowhere else to turn. we got to think about it because we have to deal with how we're going to feel better. Are we going to take a pill? Are we going to, as we're suffering, how do we, how do we suffer in a way that we can be not hurting ourselves? It's hard to explain for someone who may not have been suffering, but once you have suffered, then you know how people feel when they are sick. And I often said that to myself. I said, I've been suffering for a while now, and I really understand what it means to be sick. And I really can relate to those people who've been feeling ill every day of their lives and how much more appreciative I am with that little bit of time that I have in my life when I do actually feel well. And I, I find, too, that I would get in the way of my of my healing because I try to do this and I try to do that instead of just relaxing and turning to God in the first place. 
I'd be focusing more on the pain and focusing more on what I should be doing than turning to Jesus. Instead of, you know, praying in the Spirit, I would be out there looking and looking and trying to find what I can find. And yes, you know, in the midst of it all, God had given me wisdom. But then he also said to me, come to me, those who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And what does he mean by that? Not so much rest about resting and sleeping, but resting in him and knowing that he is the one who is in control and he is the one that is going to give you healing and the peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's what it means when we are sick. Sometimes we need to pay attention to him. Sometimes we need to understand that through our sickness he uses that to bring us closer to him and I often said to myself Lord I I sense that you're using this and every day for at least a month he would say to me Tina I'm going to heal you I'm going to raise you up like the wings of an eagle I'm going to heal you I'm going to take away the symptoms and I believed him but it was hard for me to fathom because I still wasn't feeling well So I had to trust that. And yes, there were times where I did feel well. He told me I would have many good days. And I had to really walk in faith, believing that even in the midst of the pain, that he was healing me. It didn't manifest itself right away. But that's what faith is, believing without seeing. And the more that I believed that he healed me or is healing me, the more I realized I was getting better. And that, I believe, is being in the midst of the storm, in any storm that he brings into our lives. If we turn our eyes upon him, just as Peter did in the boat, and don't look down and say, Lord, here I am. And as he reaches out his hand, and we grab it, and he can save us from all of our storms. Amen. And so he can do this in every aspect of our lives. I want to read a little bit from what it says in the Bible here. In the scriptures, it says here, Be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6-7 Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, what does that mean? Be anxious for nothing. That means absolutely nothing, meaning whatever is in your circumstances. It may seem fearful you at, at the time, but he's giving us encouragement. Do not get anxious. Don't worry. I mean, that comes because we worry about what's going to happen to us. That's what anxiety brings. But in everything, in prayer or supplication, he wants us to come to him with our concerns. With thanksgiving, he wants us to be grateful. When we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, then the Holy Spirit can come into our hearts and move and heal us from the inside out. Let your requests be made known to God. Don't hold back. Tell the Lord what you want. Tell the Lord what you need. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. That means that it's not the peace that the world knows, but the peace of God where you can go, you can take a break. And even though in the midst of the storm and you're still struggling and you still have pain, you know that you have peace and you're not struggling and there's no anxiety. That's going to guard your heart and your mind. That's going to give you rest. And that's an important thing that we often take for granted, is not to worry. In Matthew 6, 25, it says, Do not worry. Let me read it to you. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, What you're going to put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. 
For they are neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Then I'm going to skip a verse and go to verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? In our times of tribulation, in our times of the storm, we worry because we don't know where our supplies are going to come from. Now, I'm going to talk about our situation right now, how we have in this world right now. We have so much turmoil. There are many, many people who are struggling because they don't have a job. They can't pay their rent. They don't have money for food. They don't know where their next dollar is going to come from. But Jesus says to us, he tells us, he commands us, he says, do not worry about your life. If you are a believer, we have God who's going to be our biggest provider. He supplies us with all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He said, don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about your body. Don't worry about what you're going to put on. In other words, He's got it in control. We may not have it manifested in front of us right there, but if we trust him every day, things are going to happen. People are going to come into our lives. They're going to bless us with stuff. You're going to find things on your doorstep. You're going to find that someone's going to call you up and invite you to, 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 to have something that's going to help you. Or they're going to somehow provide a need or send you some money. That's how God works, when we least expect it. He says, he talks about the birds of the air, for they neither soar, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet God heals, or God provides for them. And is he not, are we not more valuable than they are? Of course he, we are. And so how much more is he going to provide for us? So we need not worry. Very, very important. The next thing that God has uh, asked me to to speak about is that what do we do when we feel panic? Do we pick up the phone and we call our our friend? This is the most trying time where God will want to work in your heart and build your faith up because of that worry. He's going to take that worry and he's going to raise you up. We need to turn to Jesus personally, not to our own thoughts or not to others. He is our confidant. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Use the spiritual gifts that he gave to us. The spiritual gifts as in tongues. To heal, each, to heal one another, we can get edified from the inside out when we use our spiritual gift. We can't do it on our own strength. And we don't want to take the long route. And we also miss out when we get on the wrong path and we decide that, hey, I can do this. I can do this. I'm just going to get on this path. And we get on the wrong path and we get distracted. And meanwhile, all we needed to do was just lift it up to Jesus. And one thing that I often did is don't bring up, if God has healed something in your life, don't bring it back up. Because you're stirring all, all of this thing, these, this negativity up and it'll set you back. And re, you'll start reliving the, those thoughts and you'll be right back where you were before. If God has healed you, then talk about the healing. It's really easy. Someone will call you up and say, well, how are you feeling today? And meanwhile, they're going to remind you of all of the things that you said. And, oh, you know, are you are you feeling better today? And, oh, that's terrible that you have this. And Don't go there. Remind yourself. No, the Lord healed me. And I'm not going to talk about those things again. Because we can get drawn right back. He's trying to do a new thing in our hearts. In our physical bodies, he's healing us, but he's also healing us in our minds. He's also bringing us closer to him in faith. He's using those situations. He's using the sickness. He's using illness. He's using whatever tribulation or storm that you're walking through. We need to run the good race and to follow him and come to him. To worry is to sin. Sin is that downward spiral in our lives. It's all encompassing, and particularly in our thought realm. Sin breeds discontentment, emotional distress, anxiety, fear. 
If you don't know why you're feeling bad, then st start to spend time with Jesus more and ask him to show you what, what is this root cause that's causing me to, to, to worry. Because sometimes it's a little deeper than just what we're going through at that particular day. Sometimes that can be the reason for your physical problems. Amen. You know, the world, they often tell us to use mindfulness, stress management, and anti-anxiety anti medicine, feel-good drugs. You know, they want us to focus on ourselves, and, you know, the world focuses on each person, you know, taking their turn to heal themselves. But I tell you, Jesus is our greatest stress manager, and unless we turn our eyes and thoughts and ways and repent of our sinful ways, there's no way that we can actually heal ourselves not in ways that are permanent. But when we let go of the fleshy ways of worry and concern, he can help us. Like the song says, I surrender all. And only when we rely on him, we can get the healing. We need to give him everything. Our thoughts, our healing, our, our expectations, our assurances. He promises everything in the Bible. He is the great physician. Don't just think about it. We, you need to act upon it. It's not enough to think about our healing, but we need to act upon it. We need to act upon it daily like medicine each day. You know, you don't miss taking your medicine that the doctor gave you. Well, why would you miss what Dr. Jesus tells us to do to come to him? He is the great physician. He knows all things and he sees all things. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows every hair on our head and he knows the best treatment. And it doesn't cost money, but it's a much greater cost. It requires our time, our commitment, our faithfulness, our cooperation, our full participation. Let me read to you what it says about uh, stirring up the gift of God, meaning the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of tongues through the Holy Spirit. In 2 Timothy 1, 6-7, it says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You must agree with me that in order to be healthy, we have to have a sound mind as well as having physical health. They work to, together. Sometimes our minds can actually cause us to be sick physically. So that spirit of fear can be overcome when we stir up that gift, and that's the gift of tongues that God had given us and people have received by the laying on of hands, as it talks about in the book of Acts. So to stir up that gift means that we need to start to pray in our Holy Spirit language that God had first imparted to us through the laying on of hands. Amen. But the Helper will teach you in everything and will cause you to remember all that I've told you. This Helper is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. I leave you peace, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world does. So don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. He's telling us, don't be afraid or troubled. That's in John chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. The Holy Spirit was given to us as our counselor. He is the one who is our helper. And we must come to him so that we can get the help that we need. In Proverbs 3, Verse 6 and 7 it says, Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So if you are on the wrong path, Jesus will get you back on the right path. If you trust in him and lean not to your own understanding, meaning put your own thoughts aside. Acknowledge him. Go to him. Pray in the spirit. Reach out to him. Spend as much time as you need to. You know, I often uh, say to myself, 
for those Christians who say, well, I, you know, go into my prayer closet every day and I, you know, I have a routine and I pray for five to ten minutes and then I go on and do my own day. Well, the Lord wants us to come to him all the time. Like, like we go to our best friends. We don't necessarily schedule a time every day. We go to him when we need him because he's our best friend. And that's what we do with our human best friends. We go to them. We don't just schedule a time and then walk away. He wants a personal relationship with us, not a scheduled relationship. So our, our we need to come to him always. We need to pray without ceasing. In all supplication, we need to go to him so that he can give us peace. So that our anxiety and fear will leave us. And that we can be joyful with the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. I once heard my pastor say to people, Well, be happy in your sickness. Because people don't want to listen or do what Jesus tells them to do. And I agree. Unless we relinquish ourselves over to Jesus fully. Not just a little bit, but fully. Pray in the Spirit. Listen to His voice. Because His sheep do hear His voice. He can't hear us unless we surrender everything to Him. And we need to empower ourselves with the Holy Spirit. That we are able to let go of our anxiety. Let go of our fear. Able to trust Him in all things. Able to get answers to prayer. Amen. I'm going to ask that the Lord Jesus show you right now what it is in your life, what storm that you're going through in the midst of the big storm, what storms that you need to, to overcome in your life, the anxiety that keeps coming and creeping in. The Lord is using us and raising us up to be witnesses in this world, this fallen world. He's giving us the opportunity during this time with the COVID-19 virus. He's giving people opportunities to grow, to become new from the inside out through the power of the Holy Spirit, to reach out to family and community and others, to pray for one another, to pray for our government, to pray for those who need healing. The storm can be calmed. Jesus calms our storms. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, right now. And I pray that prayer right now, Jesus, that you touch each and every person right now and show them, show each and every one of us, Lord God, what we need to change, Lord, to, to calm the storms of our lives, Lord. Because you know us personally, Lord. You know every storm that we have. You know in the midst of what's going on in the world, but we even have personal storms that we need to come through, Lord Jesus. And I'm grateful, Lord God, that you are taking care of each and every one of us, that we can turn to you for everything, and that you give us rest. Thank you, Lord God, and thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all.